But there's this weird story that kind of uh, cropped up that I kind of want to read that I think is the catalyst for why we have such um, prehistoric licensing laws in our borough. Because I was trying to make, I was trying to read up on some research to find out why pubs and bars close at 1 or 2 a.m. in London or in the UK overall. I don't know why. Why is it that you can't serve alcohol until 6 a.m.? Um, why is it bars can't open until 4? Like, w what is the reason? Or the other way around, right? Why can't you keep a bar until 4? Well, to, to six and why can't you serve alcohol until four what is the reason behind it i couldn't really find anything about it maybe i have to go through some um, actual um, go, um dot gov stuff but i found this article really interesting because maybe this was the catalyst for why why we are where we are at the moment and it says this on the following this is the article from sky news as you can see from the screen but i'll read it out to you if you're listening via the podcast so it says the following um the real reason uh thatcher tried to ban as the house party is revealed uh, Margaret Thatcher tried to stop the new fashion of acid house parties after an all-night rave shattered the tranquility of a Tory MP's uncle, um, of a Tory MP's uncle newly released um, papers show. The Prime Minister asked to be briefed on what powers the police had to control the parties and months later legislation was introduced to tackle unlicensed gatherings. However, she was warned by then Scotland Secretary Malcolm Rifkind that proposed laws should not affect innocent um, events such as barn dances. <laughs> Which is funny. Margaret Thatcher was alerted of the burgeoning rave culture after a party held in Bentley, Hampshire in August 1989. Right? There she is, the Iron Lady. Um, Archie Hamilton, MP of Epsom and Ewell, forwarded the Prime Minister a letter from his uncle, Gerard Coke, which was funny, who said he was uh, very disturbed by the party which had lasted until 7.30am. Mr. Coke, a former magistrate, said that there was a feeling of collective anger and helplessness that police could not do nothing because it was a private party. In a handwritten note on the letter, Miss Thatcher was asked if the Home Sec Health Office should provide a briefing what powers should police had to control the gathering. Um, she replied, yes, if this is a new fashion, we must be prepared for it and preferably prevent such things from starting. Like, fucking hell. The rise of Acid House in the late 80s saw huge outdoor raves take place across Britain, accompanied by use of recreational drugs such as ecstasy. The Cabinet Office papers released by the National Archives show how, by the time the dance music Summer of Love concerned about the rave spread to the highest level of the government. By a memo in October 89 from Caroline Sinclair number 10, policy unit showed officials were more concerned with nuances caused by the noise than the growing use of ecstasy. So the so which is which is got which goes to show what why the Hackney kind of licensing law came involved, right? Because it's, it is most of these draconian licensing laws with bars and clubs within the, the kind of like trendy parts of London are to do with noise complaints because most of the buildings that surround these bars and clubs have been built in the 60s and 70s so they're, they're not capable of withstanding that amount of noise especially when it comes from especially because most London bars and clubs don't have actual sound engineers that actually can put a good sound system in or know how to tweak it to get the most out of it without redlining it right most bars and clubs have a if it, it, Again, if you're curious, which you probably shouldn't do because you probably get kicked in the head, lean over a DJ booth in any bar or club in London and look at the mixer. Everything's on red. It's just like all the gauges are on red. They don't know how to kind of like, um, you know, level it out. And, I'm, and I think that's one of the things that I've been really good at, especially because I play in bars and clubs that are, that are predominantly um, attended by normal people. And I start at nine. I usually never put the volume above an, a seven, right? Do you know what I mean? Unless there's an actual crowd there and I actually want to crank up a little bit. And even then, it adds a little layer to the mix. Um, but the article continues and says, uh, she said drugs are not the main issue. The parties are a form of unlicensed public entertainment for which people buy tickets. What is needed is a way to hitting the, is, is, uh, is a way of hitting at the profits made by the organizers this should discourage the craze jesus christ which then explains why licensing laws are in place right licensing law we we limit the times that you're open which hurts your pocket which then will uh put off other people opening new bars because the licensing laws put in place for hackney are for new bars only existing bars are still going to have whatever legislation they had before if they're able to have four late licenses a year whatever it is it's fucking ridiculous right i don't know how bars make money in london but i guess for the most part because we're an alcoholic city you're gonna make money but this goes to show that you know uh by 1999 1990 legislation was introduced uh heightening punishment for those punishing for those organizing parties without licenses changes to law contributed to a shift in dance music culture that saw parties move from outdoor raves to clubs which could be more easily policed licensed and monitored which is interesting because they moved them from clubs they moved them from the outdoors to, to pubs and clubs right but now 
they're trying to really regulate pubs and clubs, which is then forcing people to go outside again. It's fucking crazy. Like,